Good morning, Vietnam, and here I am back again. Today we're going to talk about my personal journey through childhood trauma and how I have alleviated it and resolved some issues and how I'll talk about how you can actually never resolve all the issues or resolve anything really, really deep. <clears throat> So, I would really appreciate if you guys, anybody watching it, please subscribe, please press like, please comment. I'd love to know your feet, get some feedback. So, to see if you like these type of videos. I'm going to start off this video by quoting myself. I wrote this during my research and writing of this video and I will refer to my notes most of the time. It, it, excuse me. <clears throat> it also appears there is a selective awareness and intelligence when it comes to coping, dealing and resolving childhood trauma. This came to me while I was writing about my own personal journey that Trauma is actually selective. The ones you can access, even the ones you can access, how does it affect you? This, I think, is almost another dilemma on trying to resolve and get on with your life knowing about your personal childhood traumas. Firstly, my series on the absurd solution, solutions, as postulated by the great Dr. Gabe Mate, his theory on how to overcome childhood trauma. This is the only person so far to have commented on my series, and I thank her. Her name is Sarah Heavens. She writes, thank you for shedding light on this subject. When I first heard him talk, he appeared to be very sad, a very sad man, constantly talking about his trauma. But if he healed, why is he so depressed looking? Also, I agree with you on Huberman. This is obviously a great tell. She's quite smart and I didn't realise it until I read her uh, comment. He does look really sad. He is slow in talking. He's incomprehensible many times, as I've shown in the four videos I have done of him. So, if he has discovered how to resolve his childhood trauma, then, and we know he has had major trauma, being born in the last year of the uh, World War II, then why is he looking and talking like someone who is still so devastated? by his trauma. So I guess his solution does not work. So I have an excerpt from my last video on Dr. Mate, part four, uh, that talks exactly about this. I'm not going to go over it. You can watch all four videos. The introduction to the first one, part one, I think is the best, and it's quite a bit of part four, I think is also very good, but they are all have something in them that I think you will get something out of. There is an overlap of every one of them, about 30% as far as I can tell. But the main thing, I'm going to quote from my writing, my thoughts on part four, you are now trying to develop all this therapy concepts for you to overcome your trauma. I then have a disclaimer and I hope anyone paying attention that has any mental issues, especially traumatic and uh, sorry, uh, have thoughts of committing suicide. Now I, while I was writing this and, and the last few weeks I wrote just a quick seven part seven items selection of my thoughts on pain number one pain changes people two it makes them trust less 
Some people gained weight from bad diets, which has been handed down and given to them and what they ate with their parents growing up. And they cannot lose that weight because that's all they know about food. People think they are more special than you and they try to shut you up or shut you out of themselves, a group, a meeting, their lives. While pain may change people, it does not have to define them. But I think it does. We are simply not aware of it. So in, you see in quite a few movies, they talk about what defines you is what you do. I believe what really defines you is the pain you have and how you deal with it. Number six, addiction, drugs, buying things, working out, prostitution, whatever. Is prostitution an addiction? In some cases, absolutely. Especially Dr. Marte, he is an expert in uh, drug abuse and a lot of, especially women, go into prostitution to pay for their drug abuse, which, as he's pointed out time and time again, that it's caused by sexual childhood trauma. Finally, and this one is for me, picking the wrong woman or man, picking the wrong profession, not being able to get an education, never making enough money, feeling immature, inadequate, emasculated, too feminized, and of course feeling simply unattractive. And from the Rolling Stones song, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you get what you need. Now into my introduction to the video, finally. I just saw a YouTube, I can't remember the title and I can't find it now. And more or less its title was 10 things, 11 things you should know about childhood trauma. Well. I don't know how he knows anything about me or my childhood trauma, so what the hell is he talking about? I believe childhood trauma is the same as dreams. Nobody can tell you about that. Sorry. Nobody can tell you about what happens after the traumatic event, how you process it and the effect it has had on your life. There's a report below that I reference about trauma on uh, identical twins and that just simply proves my point. So please do your own research. The effects of a traumatic experience and how you process it are purely your own. Take videos at face value on somehow trying to help you in understanding your personal tra childhood trauma. I see many videos from many sources, also more vloggers interviewing even uh, Dr. Gabor Mate. Uh, I suggest you watch my videos of how I've criticised four only of his videos. He's at least, at least 20 out there at the moment, but he is an expert, but only that about childhood trauma sexual childhood trauma and related to sex addiction. I'm also critical of a, an article below that I reference and I'll get to in a little while. You, then, uh, after you do your own research and hopefully watch some of my videos, then you can make up your own mind if he is correct or anyone else, in part, 50%, whatever. Most of the other experts have similar views as Dr. Marte and in my opinion, I have no idea what they're talking about. So my next heading is how you deal with childhood trauma. So this is my opinion only. This is based on my experience, my experience with mental illness. My brother became a schizophrenic about 48 years ago and has been one since. I have visited him many, many times in the early days, I'll talk about soon. So, and I've talked to his psychiatrist, psychologist, 
about his behaviour and what they think of it. And I've read many articles on schizophrenia and I find that they're uh, quite useless because they haven't gone any further and know any more about it than they did 50 years ago, except improve the quality of the drugs they give them to control them. So, you can act out some behaviour today at any time or age in your life. A childhood traumatic event will trigger this behaviour. It will come to the surface and you will act it out. Around 9% of the time it's a negative reaction without you being aware of where this behaviour has come from. And the second part of why I'm making this video and why I have some expertise in my personal resolution and understanding of childhood trauma is I did primal therapy. I started it in February of 1980 and I'll talk about that more in a moment. And I write here unless you want to do something as traumatic as primal therapy. My joke. So here's a list of my behaviours or actions that you may take what I think can help you deal with childhood trauma today or in the future. Good luck. Number one, you being aware of the behaviour or, or a choice you have made. Number two, sometimes you need to express yourself most of the time it is to get angry, very angry, like road rage. But this is the key, one of the keys. You let it out. You do not hurt anybody, fight or crash into anyone with your vehicle. You don't suddenly stop and get out and try to have a punch up like an old friend of mine used to do in my early days in Australia. While this feeling is encompassing you, you cannot do any of that, of course. You may have to go to another safe location to let out all of the anger. A lot of parents end up taking it out on their children because they cannot fight back. And a lot of adults pick on people that are not as strong as them and they know they can berate them, especially emotionally. A lot of men also take out take it out on a person who is much weaker than them and that is especially in domestic issues and situations where men because they are strong I think they can release their personal frustrations on their girlfriend their wives number three you may need to seek help friends psychiatric do anger management whatever it takes to get you to understand that it is only a feeling and then after expressing it, you have to get back under control. Four, yes, there are many thousands of situations that can trigger you. As I stated in the beginning, traumatic childhood experience can come out anytime, anywhere, and they're, they're selective. They trigger you, they don't trigger you, you just don't know. So, these situations, they can anger you, they can demean you, they can put you down in some way, disre disrespect you. Not getting your raise or bonus or promotion. Why, an example I give, why a group of people overreacted to some situation which I've never been able to work out why. Why did postal workers suddenly started attacking and killing their co-workers 20 years ago? I don't know, it must have been like the, uh, that group, I can't remember what it, they actually call it, where there's a, there was an immigrant in New York City about 20 years ago, uh, someone from Africa who was reaching for his wallet and one policeman, like there was like five policemen detectives, one policeman started shooting it and then they all shot him 40 times. So if someone starts shooting, then everyone starts, starts it's collective, uh, <laughs> I don't know, collective uh, 
You can't stop yourself. If someone starts something, then you follow what they do. Remember also, not all these situations are created by you. It can have nothing to, to do with you. An example is a company is simply downgrading their staff. They're firing, you know, 10, 20% of the staff. They've merged with a company and they've found it more efficient to fire you. <clears throat> you may have created that negative outcome, but was it from childhood trauma? Number seven, this is the one tricky question Dr. Mate also mentions, and I'm sure other people who are trying to explain childhood trauma. Can you make a connection with your childhood to your behavior, your childhood trauma to your behavior? If you can, great, but some trauma is too deep, so deep, no obvious connection comes to mind immediately. Of course, it can come to mind much, much later, as I will mention in, in a minute in one of my connections. So there's no obvious connection, and how do you do it without help? Well, for me, it was primal therapy and the tools I learned by doing that that has made my life acceptable without being angry all the time and without uh, having a negative uh, outlook on my life. Nine, determine this is by knowing a bad situation can get better next time. Knowing you are having a meltdown and maybe you can decrease this reaction a little, less destructive this time and the times after. This I believe is the only way to end up controlling your behavior. One of my examples where I know it's caused by childhood trauma but I can only uh, guess what really has, which childhood trauma caused me to keep behaving this way and that is I always get involved with women that need to be taken care of or of, or at least it is what I do. Taking care of them is part of my psychosis. I know this, but even to this day, I just did the same thing again in the choice of a woman I am with, and that was two and a half years ago. Well, I'm finally, we'll be separating from her in the next month or two, and I've told her. So, is it childhood trauma? Yes. But is it destructive enough to ruin me? No. But it has really made me much poorer over the years. The amount of money I've burnt on women. I have been rip, ripped off by a few girlfriends and my last wife especially by, with a lot of money. What is the childhood trauma? I postulate one, I was very poor growing up and, and, want, and I want to help them. Two. My mother was always there, but I think her inability to protect us from the wrath of my father has made me want to protect the woman I have been with, but with money. I mean, you talk about being psychotic. Twelve. I really love my mother and I should have been more help to her in her old age. Probably my biggest regret in life. And I don't have many but I had to take care of myself every time she needed help. But it seemed like coincidentally, when I had money, I was too busy and taking care of business and so forth, especially in the US. And when I could have really helped her, I didn't have a, a lot of money or, a, or very, very little money. The other thing is I left Australia where I grew up. I lived there from the ages of 5 to 28 years old and I went to the US to do primal therapy. This is where I have developed, again, all my ideas of course, half are from the primal screen therapy uh, about childhood trauma and how to treat it. The other half is just a lot of my personal experience, again with my brother, mental, mental illness and how I've dealt with many situations are they non-related to childhood trauma? I think very little. I think we are consumed with what has happened to us growing up. 
Primal therapy is a very particular psychological therapy that, of course, does not work for all and every one. Even for people, I, I know people personally quite well who also did the therapy, but they left it feeling quite negative about it. I have always been 100% positive about it. 14. Primal therapy <laughs> Any, and going on. It sounds, listening to Dr. Marte, that he has gotten his grounding theory, understanding of his theories from this theory of primal therapy, primal scream therapy. I will let you research this yourselves. And finally, crying is the most natural connection you can possibly make to a childhood traumatic event or any event traumatic current that you experience at any time. It releases your pent up feelings, especially anger, frustration or any pain of any description. It is the safest method I know of and possible for you to get some personal psychological relief. As I mentioned earlier, an example of how this process works, I made another connection last week uh, about my own personal uh, behavior and experience. And that was, has to do with uh, me having an inferiority complex. I know this, but I only realized the extent or where it came from, and this I believe to be true, is that it is exactly what my father did. Even though this is not, this is a different type of trauma. It's not directly related to my parents directly, but their behavior and me watching it is caused me to behave this way. Now, there are many people, especially racists, who become racist because their parents are racist. And that's exactly the, what I'm talking about. I watched him many times in company when I felt that he was degrading himself, even when I was younger in my teens. This memory, I hope, will give me now some more confidence that I can overcome a little bit more the next time I'm in a position to assert and be positive about myself. So there's a great example of how this type of therapy will work and can work and will work for you. So, the next few pages is my personal history. I just will tell you only the beginning of it, and then the rest, if you want to follow it, you can read it uh, in my notes, which is uh, going to be published uh, on YouTube. There's another video just with my notes. I was born in a tiny village in northern Greece. I wasn't born in a hospital, actually in the village, in a tiny hut, apparently. Even though my sister, luckily, if that's true, she, she went to the hospital to be born, or her, my, our mother did. But there's no one alive in the village to tell me why I happened to be born in the, in the village. It's a tiny village, way up in the mountains. My father was a goat herder most of his first 30 years of working. He started working at five years old. He never went to school, was never in a classroom. And as I say, during my history here, he was actually a really smart guy. But he never got to develop that, other than learning languages from people that he worked with and became very interested in politics and loved to talk to my first girlfriend about it. Uh, I go on about growing up in Australia and about the racism the us Italians and Greeks got. And I even have a, a reference, a, uh, about uh, remembering stinging slurs. Uh, you can look it up on the internet. And I'll read from it. It's from another Greek guy that grew up in Australia. No, I'm not sure whether he was born. It doesn't say if he was born in Australia. I wasn't, as I mentioned. 
To quote from him, I was called a dago when I went to school. I didn't know what it meant, so I would fight and fight. We were proud of being Greek, but not of being called dagos. When we got the cafe, it changed from dagos to greasy dagos, greasy spoon dagos. I remember all this language that was directed to my fellow Greeks, but I was lucky enough. It was never against me directly because I learned English very quickly and very well, and I still have an Australian accent, more or less. Um, it's more about me growing up in a blue collar area, and also I attended a fantastic high, high school that at that time had exceptional teachers and quite a few of us, and there was quite a few immigrants who went to university. So I talk all about that here, and I'll read this paragraph. The main thing I remember was, of course, my main childhood traumatic experience, and that is that I lived in fear of my father m most of my life, and I actually still do, and he's been dead uh, uh, nearly 40 years. He ruled the house this way, that is, our whole house lived in fear of him. I won't say overtly all the time, but definitely I always felt the tension with him because, and this is one of the reasons I was, number one, he never spoke to me. He never spoke to me about anything positive about me. And he never touched me. I mean, these are three things you, you without that, you cannot grow up and be even close to normal. I mean, close to being not affected by this traumatization of these three things. They are three of the most important things you can possibly give your children. Uh, so, in late 1975, I was doing quite well financially. My second year out of university, I almost doubled my salary with this job. But I was very unhappy, disconnected. I didn't know anything about myself, where I was going, what I was going to do with my life, other than just working and making money at the time. Even today, I don't feel that happy. As a friend of mine said many years ago, around 40 years ago, Life is just a collection of happy times, and I find that to be so true. Uh, I deal with my life as everyone else does, as best they can. I do have quite a number of great memories, happy memories, but the rest of the time work is simply, sorry, life is just simply hard work. I mentioned a few of my personal experiences that really made me feel great like visiting the glass pyramid, the, the entrance to the Louvre Museum that I visited many years ago, soon after it was built, and it just gave me such a great feeling of happiness and joy. I will say this, being with a woman, I cannot say it really made me happy. I enjoy sex and Sometimes I believe it's just an addiction because it's one of the rare enjoyments I can get physically at least any, almost any time. My first girlfriend, coincidentally again I mention her because she's helped me so many in so many different ways, uh, is probably the closest I would say I've been happy with a woman. About this time, two, two and a half years or after I graduated, I was around 24, that I met a guy who gave me the book The Primal Scream. Just reading that book changed my life and how I viewed myself and how I saw the past as controlling who I am today and possibly a way to resolve some of that pain so my life today would be more happy, better. And 
But of course, procrastinating for four more years, got married, went to Europe, got divorced, and then finally uh, ended up in uh, LA in February of 1980. Now I talk about this journey to get there, about my family's religious faith, and then I talk about coming back to Australia while I was in Europe before I got married, when, I, when we found out, and my sister and brother-in-law were also traveling together through Europe, that uh, my brother had become schizophrenic. It's hard for anyone to really understand that unless you are close to someone who is schizophrenic or know someone, or you have a family member. Uh, it really is, when it happens to you, it is exactly like one flew over the cuckoo's nest, and sometimes worse, especially the first year that my brother was a schizophrenic. I mean, it was, it's so debilitating to see someone that close to you behave and act this way. So I talk about all that, and finally, after I got home from see my brother and my mother after flying all the way back from Europe. Uh, I met my father and we had dinner and we talked more about it. He asked me about marijuana. I didn't feel that mar marijuana use by itself can cause anything even close to that sort of psychotic episode. And But there have been studies that do show that it can trigger psychotic episodes in young men. That I think is true. So after we finish talking about this, lo and behold, my father blamed me for my brother's descent into schizophrenia. Unbelievable. It's just staggering his logic and reasons behind it, of course, excuse me, no one would ever know. I mean, he's blaming other people for his total failure of being a parent. And as I mentioned the three things earlier, hopeless parents, hopeless, more than hopeless than you can imagine. No wonder we are all and, uh, not doing well in life to put it mildly, and people like Marte are trying to find his solutions, and you can see in watching him that he has definitely not found his solution to, to help himself. And as I write here, I guess Plato must have whispered in his ear that he is crazy. This is the one. The latest incident, because I moved out of the house after I gradu graduated university anyway, it also made him angry because he thinks I put shame on the family for wanting to get away from him and live my own life. And I felt that, I can honestly say, this dro drove the nail in the coffin that I hate my father. So I go on and on, but I will mention this. The movie came out in the early 1970s. There were so many great movies that were made in the, from mid 60s to I would say late 70s, early 80s. And I watched so many fantastic movies like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And one of them was called Padre Padrone, an Italian movie in Italian with subtitles. Uh, in English, My Father, My Master. What a fabulous movie. Because it described my father to a T. The protagonist, as, as a five-year-old, gets dragged up the mountain to start taking care of the sheep. And this is exactly what happened to my father. The poor guy in the movie never went to school and only started school in his late teens, if not early 20s, I forget. And he actually became a professor. And I th think definitely my father had the ability to become much more highly educated. 
I'm not going to tell you the ending because it is it really surprised me. Very well written by the guys, and in fact, one of the brothers just died a couple of weeks ago, like 90 years old, whatever. Uh, so I go on about what happened to me and how my father ruled in fear, and because one reason, of course, is because he was a little taller than me, but he had the strength at least double of what I ever had. His hands, in terms of area, were twice as big as mine. His forearms were twice as big as mine. I mean, he was a bull and had zero fear. Then I go on about uh, arriving in LA in February of 1980 and starting the course. And I'm just, uh, and I'll just talk about this part. Uh, I talk about Ronald Reagan again. And you'll see why, if you read the script, why I hate that son of a bitch with all my heart. Um, and this is where I became aware when I wrote this, wrote this sentence, which I quoted at the beginning of this video. And, you'll, and if you look at what I've written before and after this, you, you'll get an understanding how I came to this. Uh, awareness, connection of childhood trauma. It appears there is a selective awareness and intelligence when it comes to coping, dealing and resolving childhood trauma. I think this is such a huge connection for me in understanding of my own personal journey on remembering, connecting, trying to resolve some of my early childhood trauma and to prevent it from affecting my current life. So I go on about Ronald Reagan and about therapy and about what happens in primal therapy without getting into all the details, of course. Uh, I did, I did become, become very close to a guy in uh, He'd already finished primal therapy. I met him while in my second or third year I was in the US and we became very close. Uh, but he passed away 10 years after that from cancer. And I read, he was so traumatized from his beatings from his parents that his body totally collapsed under the weight of that childhood trauma. And this is a, a great example where people can be affected not only psychologically but physically. And it is alluded to uh, by Dr. Marte and it's one of the only positive things that I can say about Dr. Mike, the uh, family doctor who has done a few hundred YouTubes but he did mention this in one, but of course he has no idea what to do with even knowing that knowledge. Uh, I write how the, my, my friend's death really affected me for actually three years. I didn't even know it affected me for that long until one day I woke up and felt this um, weight lifted off me and finally uh, stopped grieving for him. So you can have traumatic events in your current life that still can affect you quite deeply for, for one day or for me it was three years. So traumatic effect, events in your life do have traumatic effects on you psychologically and physically at any time. Uh, I go very large, two, two very long paragraphs about, I talk about HIV and AIDS and how this woman who researched it, who tested positive and negative a few times to the test. So after researching it, she wrote a pamphlet and she itemized in it that many countries use actually different tests to show if you have or have not HIV. 
Also, a woman called Cecilia Farber of the Rolling Stone Spin magazine. She did a lot of research on it. She wrote three long articles in the magazine. And also, the National Review, a very right-wing magazine you may know, may know of. They all concluded, without a doubt, that HIV is a hoax and does not exist. And by all definitions, and my research also, is that HIV, even though V stands for virus, is not by definition or in any medical way or term a virus. So, I talk about what happened to Miss Maggio and her daughter, which I, you're in, very interested. I also talk about what Trump did when the virus, COVID, hit the world. I uh, still remember him, he's spewing all that crap coming out of his mouth about it's just going to go away, it's a cold, or, uh, oh, just inject bleach and it will cure you. I mean, he's delaying even wearing masks. You know, people just don't talk about it. The media don't talk about it. He killed hundreds of thousands of Americans. I mean, the guy <laughs> should be castrated. I mean, this is... I mentioned earlier, if you read, I'm talking about the dumbing down of America, started by especially Ronald Reagan, and the lies and lies and lies that he said. I also mentioned two other cases. One is the thalidomide case in Germany, where they gave this drug to women. I can't remember why. I was going to look it up, but I forgot. And it caused deformities in their babies. And the other one is baby powder here in the US. Well, I live in Vietnam now, but in the US. Uh, God, I can't think of the name of the company. They put talc in the baby powder or in <coughs> powder that you would use as a deodorant or as a drying agent, and the talc actually caused genital cancer in many women in the US. So I talk about my ups and downs of life, of making money, losing money, and my second wife, how she ripped me off for $200,000. May she not rest in peace. Uh, how I built the last house I built, I became a general contractor for the last 25 years I was in the USA, and I also an expediter in obtaining and changing, getting permits, etc., etc., from the city of LA. But I knew when I started that project, my last project, which took, which took eight years, in fact, is that I would not be living. In the, in the Western country again, and I started my search to live in a much more affordable country as making, I did not make a lot of money after all my expenses in building this house. The address I've given here, if you want to look it up. And I ended up in Vietnam, quite affordable, beautiful women, and if you can find a job, and I did a couple of times, they were sh short term, but for Westerners, it's, if you have expertise, like I do, then you get paid extremely well. Well, that's the main part of the journey. I didn't describe all the journey because it would just take too long. I, I hope you read it and you can see how your life book, it does go up and down even as you become more and more aware of your childhood trauma. I am still working on myself. I still find out things about myself and, I, and I'm still getting better. But as anyone will ever tell you about resolving or getting to understand your childhood trauma, it is slow. Will I ever be cured or close to cured? Absolutely not. That's an impossibility. To quote from the primal scream, you never empty the pool of primal pain. You dip into it, you get better, but that pool is so big and so deep, you're tra traumatized 
so much, but it may not come out as we know. So many people are not going to look into themselves and even go there, but they appear to lead a reasonably happy, normal life. So true, from what I have seen and lived, you can only try to resolve some of it and deal with it the best way you can. Good luck. So here's an example of an article that uh, was put out just recently by a guy called Lee Jessam, PhD, I forget what in, but it's some form of psychology. And <clears throat> I'm including this to show you that there's all these experts and the title of his article is Are All Childhoods Traumatic? Social media may overemphasize the prevalence of trauma. And what I write above that is that these so-called experts still have no idea what the hell they're talking about because they don't know, they're not in, they haven't been in contact with their own personal childhood trauma. And they still put it down, the childhood trauma, they're putting it down that you don't need to worry about it too much, you don't need to get into it, you just get, get on with your life. So I've listed 10 points that really pissed me off after watching some of his article that uh, he should read and maybe he'll have a different opinion of it. But I write, there was a smugness in his writing that turned me off immediately. The so-called professionals have been trying to control us for hundreds of years, thousands. Try and read a doctor's prescription or understand what the governor of a reserve bank is saying. It is true that on social media and other internet platforms, experts are popping up everywhere. And I've called some of them out and I've made some, as you know, videos about them. And of course, too many of their claims are just absolutely absurd and have zero logic. Here I'm including the, another reference I make earlier in this video about twins. And it's titled, One Twin Was Hurt, The Other Was Not. Their adult mental health diverged. A large study of discordant twins in which only one suffered abuse or neglect as to evidence linking childhood trauma to adult, adult illness. As I've said through this whole video, that's exactly true. How you respond to the, an identical negative parental event, we never know, and each person will react different, differently to it. My old best friend who passed away from cancer I mean, he was beaten so many times by his parents. But I am sure that there are many, many millions of people who have also been beaten by their parents and don't develop cancer. So I conclude, I wish every one of you, especially those who have watched my videos, to live in an environment that they start to get more control of, have more happy times, and have less stress in their lives. Good luck and thanks for listening. See you in the next one.